inspiration from Andre and the speakers to come. to say some words of inspiration on the topic of AI agents. Uh, so I actually wanted to begin with a story. I think like AI agents are a near and dear to my heart uh, to some extent because uh, this is a story from very early OpenAI back when it was like maybe a dozen people. And this was 2016 or so. And the zeitgeist of the day actually were RL agents. And so everyone was really interested in building agents, but very much at the time it was in the context of games primarily. So it was the height of uh, excitement around Atari and all the game playing and so on. And so my project at OpenAI was uh, trying to focus the RL agents not on games, and like Montezuma's Revenge and so on, but on uh, uh, you know, using computers, using keyboard and mouse. And so I wanted to make them useful, I wanted to make them do lots of tasks. And this project was called uh, World of Bits. And uh, I, I worked on it together with Tim Shi and Jim Fan. They're somewhere here, I think I saw them. And so uh, the three of us ended up publishing a paper. It's not a super amazing paper, uh, because basically at the time, all you had as a hammer was uh, reinforcement learning. And so we had these very simple web pages that were trying to like order, order a flight or order some, something to eat in very simple web pages. And we were uh, mashing buttons and <laughs> uh, mouse clicks and so on, and we were trying to like stumble our way into a high rewards, and obviously it didn't work. So uh, the technology was just not ready, and that was not the right thing to work on at the time. And so it turns out uh, that the right thing to do at the time was actually to forget about AI agents altogether and start uh, building language models. And then language models, now we're back here five years later, uh, I got distracted with self-driving for, for a bit there. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like AI agents are cool again. <laughs> but the tip has changed completely. And so the way you would approach these problems today is completely different. In fact, all of you are working on AI agents, but you're not using any reinforcement learning probably. And so that's so crazy. And I don't think we would have anticipated it at the time. Uh, it's just the way this played out is very, uh, is very interesting. So I'm gonna spend a bit of time on like, okay, what is causing all this hype? I think obviously all, the reason that all of you are interested in this topic is that I think it's very obvious to a lot of people that AGI will take the form factor of some kind of an AI agent. And it's not just going to be a single agent, maybe there's gonna be many agents. Maybe they're gonna be in organizations or civilizations of digital entities. And I think it's just extremely inspiring to sort of like think through, it's kind of crazy. I also want to pour some water on this too though. I think there is a large class of problems that I think are very easy to imagine, very easy to build demos for, but are actually extremely hard to make products out of. And I think many things fall into this category. I would say self-driving is, is an example of it actually. Uh, self-driving is very easy to imagine, very easy to build a demo of a car driving around the block, but making it into a product takes a decade. And the same is true, I think, for, for example, VR, very easy to imagine, build demos, but uh, getting it to work, again, takes a decade. And I think agents are kind of like that as well, very easy to imagine, excited, get excited about, build demos off, but I think if you're in it, uh, you should be in it for a decade and actually make it work. Um, one other thing I wanted to say is that I think it's kind of interesting to go back to neuroscience now and take inspiration from it again in some ways. Uh, I think this was true in the early days of deep learning, but it's now true also again for working my agents. Uh, so it's been kind of interesting for me to think about uh, sort of all the equivalents. So in particular, I think a lot of us, when we're, um, it's clear that the language model is a part of the solution, uh, but you know, how do you build an entire digital entity uh, that has all of the cognitive tools that humans have? So obviously we all think we need some kind of a potential system to, uh, to actually like plan ahead and think through and reflect on what we're doing. And uh, there's a lot more that you can take inspiration from. So for example, uh, the hippocampus is important. What is the equivalent of the hippocampus for AI agents? Well, well, it's uh, somehow like recording uh, memory traces and maybe indexing them using embeddings and retrieving from them, uh, something like that. So maybe that's kind of like the retrieval kind of thing uh, in the brain. We, I think, understand how to build visual auditory cortex roughly, but there's many still things that are like, what are the equivalents of them in AI agents? What is the uh, visual game we are doing? What does it look like in an AI agent? Uh, what is the thalamus doing? Uh, the thalamus sort of integrates all this information together it's kind of like potentially the seat of consciousness and it's got this very interesting neural circuit uh, where if you think of your brain as sort of like multiple entities fighting for the microphone uh, as to like what you're gonna do, the thalamus is probably where that happens. It's kind of interesting. So I actually brought a book that I like in neuroscience. It's called Brain and Behavior by David Eagleman. Uh, and I find this very interesting and inspirational, so I'll leave it here if you'd like to uh, go through it. 
uh, and page through it. And I just think that there's some uh, interesting inspiration to again draw from neuroscience, just like we did early on in, with respect to how we design an individual neuron, uh, we can do that again today. Maybe. <laughs> um, finally, I wanted to end with some words of inspiration. Uh, what's interesting and not obvious is that you guys building AI agents are actually at the forefront of capability of AI agents today. Um, and all the big labs, like LLM labs of OpenAI and DeepMind and so on, I suspect are not at the edge of the capability. You are at the forefront of it. Uh, so OpenAI, for example, is very good uh, at uh, training massive transformer language models. So as an example, one way to put it is, if a paper comes out that proposes some different way of training a transformer, the internal slack at OpenAI is something along the lines of, oh yeah, someone tried that two and a half years ago, and here's what happened, and here's why it didn't work. <laughs> And uh, it's very well understood and very um, very well mapped out. But when a new agent paper comes out, we're all interested and we look at it and we're like, oh, that's really cool, that's novel. And that's because, uh, you know, the team didn't have like five years to spend on it. And it's competing now with all of you, and the entrepreneurs and hackers and so on. It's really hard to do. So, yeah, I think it's really inspiring that you are at the edge of capability and uh, on something that is obviously very important and transformational. And so with those words, I think, uh, I'm eager to see what you guys build. <laughs>